Hi friends! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my attempt to make a puffy early 19th century men's shirt. I found a few different patterns and tutorials on YouTube. I found a video and a half. And I'll probably link to those two videos I used to try and make this. This will be showing you the perspective of this project from a beginner. So giving advice on things that others might not, things that I found useful, or places where I potentially ran into difficulties. You just want attention, don't you? You always want attention! Anyway. Let's go make a shirt. Here is the pattern I used taken from one of those YouTube videos I mentioned earlier, minus a shoulder piece that I wasn't really sure how to use so I ended up ignoring it in the end. I wasn't sure whether these pattern pieces included seam allowance, so just to be on the safe side, I ended up adding a half inch seam allowance around all sides. I ended up marking out my pattern pieces with just a yardstick and pencil, which worked pretty well, the pencil came off very easily. The material I'm using is not historically accurate. If you want to be historically accurate, what you would want to use is linen and waxed linen thread. Unfortunately, linen costs about $14 a yard, and about three yards are required for this garment, so that means this would be a $45 shirt. Instead, I bought muslin, M-U-S-L-I-N, which is a cheap cotton fabric that costs two dollars a yard. And I do not regret that. After I'd cut out the main body piece of the shirt, I needed to cut out the neck slit and the chest slit. The neck slit ends up being 15 inches wide so you can find the center point of your fabric and measure seven and a half inches on either side in order to get that slit and then from that same center point you can measure 12 inches down in order to find the line for that neck slit. I'm cutting off the fuzzy bits. Normally I would try and not use the salvage, the bits on the edge. But this pattern called for to be 36 inches wide, which incidentally is exactly how wide the fabric was because I bought cheap, cheap muslin. Look, now all my pattern pieces are cut out. Wristband, sleeve, gusset, the main body, as well as the neck gusset and the collar. The next step was to hem the main body piece of the shirt. You can see here I'm marking out a half inch and then an inch. To create this hem, basically you fold your fabric back once and then you fold it back again. I ended up with the second fold landing at the inch mark because that was a bit easier than getting it to the half inch mark, but if you can make a half inch seam, good on you. I decided to hand stitch all of my seams for this project, and so for the hem, I ended up using a pretty simple felling stitch to get everything to lie nice and flat and pretty. Next up was the hem for the chest slit in the front of the shirt. This was a very thin hem. You basically just rolled it back and I pinned it in place before felling this hem down as well. You can't really roll back the very bottom of the neck slit, so I attempted a buttonhole stitch around the very bottom to help make that look nice and pretty. Next up was hemming the sleeves. To get a half inch seam allowance, I basically just added an extra inch to all of the pattern pieces. And then when I went to sew them together, I just went and marked a half inch along all of the sides to tell me where to fold my seams so they would be nice, pretty, and even. And I repeated the same process for my arm gusset pieces. I did a nice strong back stitch along the seam lines. Here you see the arm gusset piece, basically a square with the top two sides inserted into the end of the sleeve seam, and the other two sides will be sewn to the edge of the main body of the shirt. 
After I finished sewing the main seam and the gusset seams, I cut down one side of the seam allowance along each side of the gusset and along the rest of the sleeve. And then I folded the other side down around that cut piece of fabric and filled that down in a process called turning and felling to make all those seams look nice and finished. Then on to the neck gusset, which you kind of fold over and then tuck into the corner of your neck slit like so. I pinned it all down and then I went to sewing. First I whip stitched and then back stitched around the top side and then with the bottom side I did the same process as with the sleeve, cutting one side of the seam allowance and turning and felling to make that look nice and finished. Next up was the collar. Seam allowance marked out, pinned, back stitch along these lines and then folded inside out. I've also checked that I'm not going to be choked. I'm pretty happy with how the collar fits, although it's going to be super tight. And then I back stitched once more along either side of the collar. Then turned the collar piece inside out hiding the seams on either side. Next, I needed to gather up the collar. I ran two running stitches parallel. And when you pull on these, you can see that it helps to gather up the fabric nice and evenly. I folded down the edges of the collar so there wasn't just like a raw edge there. That would be the long side of the rectangular collar piece opposite the fold, which is not sewed down yet. We kind of sandwich the gathered bits of the main shirt collar in between the top and bottom layers of that rectangular collar piece. But, oh my goodness, I'm trying to gather up the shirt and get it in there was really tricky, really fiddly. I have no idea if it is completely evenly gathered if I did a good job. Uh, yeah. I left the gusset straight. I think I'm supposed to do that. We'll see how it looks. Um, it kind of makes sense that that would be left smooth so the shoulders lie smooth and aren't all bumpy. But yeah, I'm gonna sew this down, but this was, this was an interesting process. Got a little felling stitch holding the collar on and then when I'm going over the smoother sections I've been using a back stitch but going on both sides and felling it down. I'll probably go over this once more to make it look nice and pretty. Possibly with a back stitch around the top. I did end up going over the top with a back stitch to help it lie flat. On the inside, I ended up using some of the salvage, kind of like a cotton tape, and just sewing it in there to help the inside look a bit more finished. Then to finish up, I went around the top of the rectangular collar piece with a nice little back stitch to help everything stay together. Next, it was time to put in the sleeves, first by sewing up the sides. Because I was working from a YouTube tutorial and a half, rather than like an actual pattern, this part got kind of interesting because the video I'd been using that had the pattern in inches did not get to the point where the YouTuber was putting in the arm's eye. The other video that used centimeters did, so I went with that. Thankfully, both patterns were almost identical and made for humans of an almost identical size, so it was 20, no, not 20, 22, not 20, 22 centimeters down. I would turn this shirt inside out, back stitch the seam up to this point, and then turn and fill that seam. Then, it was looking like an actual shirt. Like, without sleeves, but like an actual shirt. Figuring out how to situate the sleeve for sewing was interesting. Before sewing in the top part, I just sewed in the gusset straight as with the neck gussets. 
I you can see here the sleeve is inside out inside the shirt the shirt is also inside out and so if I sew around that and flip it inside out then you won't be able to see that seam anymore it totally works it actually did totally work for getting the gussets in there properly then I poorly gathered up the top part of the sleeve and sewed it in there I tested out the sleeve and the below factor was a bit much and also the shoulder was kind of low so I decided the next day I would unpick all the work I'd done on the sides and the sleeve and start again I cut off about three inches from each side and the puff is still definitely there but slightly more under control and you can see I might have been able to take potentially one more inch off, although the sleeve is getting kind of tight. I was more careful about gathering the sleeves this time. I found the top point in the sleeve and the top point in the shoulder and pinned those together to help keep both sides even. I gathered each side separately, made sure the gathers were fairly even, and then started pinning those on in place. Then it was time to start backstitching the sleeves into place. That done, it was on to the other end of the sleeve, the wristband. I forgot to leave a slit at the bottom of the sleeve, so I unpicked that and finished it off with the same type of rolled seam I used on the chest slit. Then I gathered up the end of the sleeve and sandwiched it into the rectangular wristband part, much like with the collar. And then I finished that off with a nice, neat backstitch. It's time for some finishing touches. I trimmed the seam allowance, trimming the gathered side around the sleeve, and then turned and felled all of those seams inside the shirt. Then I added a button and a buttonhole to each of the wristbands, used a buttonhole stitch to cover up that hole after having um, stabbed through it with an exacto knife to get the size nice and small. Then I repeated that same process on the neck to add a button up there. I ended up sewing the bottom of the chest slit together for some modesty and added a hopefully mostly invisible hook and eye to that chest slit as well. Then the shirt was done able to be worn in many a different fashion, including this nice, vaguely hobbit-esque look, as well as this more modern, belted look, kind of like a tunic. I really like this one. Oh, and of course the billowy poet look. Looking fabulous. And of course, it also has the ability to button up so that I might look like a nice, distinguished Regency gentleman. I'm gonna level with y'all. The best thing about this shirt is it's like just long enough for me to pretend that it's a night shirt and also a day shirt. Basically this, this is my new quarantine look, guys. Reflections overall, this might be my new favorite shirt. I love being able to walk around the house and feel like a romantic poet. It is pretty dope. If I were making this again, I would definitely still take three inches in from each side. It kept the puff to a more manageable level. And it also helped bring this sleeve up slightly. I do believe they are supposed to go over your shoulder a bit, so I don't think this is a problem that it goes down a bit. I might have even taken it in maybe one inch more, although I don't know, that might have made the sleeve a bit tight. So wouldn't 100% recommend taking it in four inches, but three inches, definitely. The sleeves are a bit slim. I actually really like slim sleeves, so it's not a big problem for me, but if you want an extra level of poof, I definitely say make your sleeve shorter and more wide. I might have made the chest slit slightly shorter, 
I ended up sewing up the bottom inch so I can wear it and even with the hook and eye I put in. The hook and eye is a good idea, but also if you are a woman or a female bodied person, you might want to make the chest slit slightly, slightly shorter. I'm very glad I used the cheap cotton muslin that's $2 a yard rather than the linen that is $14 a yard because I'm not ready for that kind of commitment yet. Muslin is a cheap fabric often used for mock-ups, but I don't feel like I'm wearing a mock-up. It just feels really special to be able to wear a garment that I sewed by hand and I put so many hours into. It feels very personal and I feel proud when I'm wearing this shirt.